Well, guys, it is looking like I can procrastinate no longer. It is time to do a harvest and pick tomatoes, peppers, and who knows what else and see what we can make with it. Well, you guys just saw my garden tour. Things were starting to go, but not really in full swing yet. But now, four days later, boy, oh boy. I tell you what, things are pumping. And today we got to pick. I'm actually a little bit nervous. Mosquitoes are still bad, even though it's not very wet. I have to say I'm a little bit nervous as to how much tomatoes might actually be ready. I'm not ready, that's for sure. But I have buckets, so I'm not going to bore you with too much details on the harvest. We're just going to get it in, and then we will see what we can make. So these ones here are my Palestine tomatoes, and I see something plucked one off last night. But it still looks good and beautiful. These don't keep for a long time. That's why I've kind of been procrastinating at picking them, because I didn't want to have to do any canning yet. <laughs> I was taking a break after the every bit counts. But... We're gonna get them picked today. They are gorgeous slicers, but they also make amazing for paste type tomatoes. All right, so there's our Palestinian tomato harvest. One of them was kind of gone bad already, so we're gonna give that one to the chickens. I don't need it. And uh, if I leave it in there, it'll just contaminate everything else. But super pleased with that. And as you can see here, still plenty on this. I only picked what needed to be picked because Freezer space is at a premium, and whatever I pick, I've got to make into something. I don't know. I really want to make some more charred salsa. I did do that recipe already as a video, but I don't have enough of that yet for the winter. It just depends on if I can get enough San Marzanos, because I really like to use the San Marzanos for that one. So, speaking of San Marzanos, I just had a glance. It's bad. There's tons on the ground. I already documented that in my garden tour, and now there's even more. But there's a lot that are ripening on those vines too. So I'm going to start in a new square bin and we'll see how many we get of those. And we might end up combining them into one. We'll see. But I'm going to pick. You guys are going to watch. And there we go. There is our San Marzano bucket harvest. About three quarters, maybe a little over full. I'm anticipating it's probably close to 25 pounds. And in the center there is my chicken food ones. Like I say, I should have harvested those before they sat on the ground. And once again, the Palestinian. The Palestinian ones are definitely going to be juice. And yeah, my juice takes a lot of tomatoes <laughs> to make my juice. So we'll see. We'll get to that later on in the video, but I still have one more batch of tomatoes to harvest. I know there's not going to be as many on these ones, and they're kind of rogue ones that got something got messed up with them i knew those ones were behind i only got seven tomatoes and one that was already yucky and for chickens but definitely our scotia tomatoes i can tell that by that perfect circular shape our scotias always just look like store-bought tomatoes as opposed to all the other ones that kind of have that heritage look or the roma look and i know i need to harvest some kale and stuff like that to start getting that in the freezer but to be honest i got to empty a few things out of the freezer in order to put more in the freezer we've had so much peppers and so much fruit and unfortunately, or I guess it's not really unfortunate, but I need to harvest peppers again because these plants over here that I just walked by are loaded with peppers. So I'm going to take my orange five gallon bucket and see what we can do. There's a lot of peppers already and I barely made it anywhere. The other thing I should harvest while I'm out here is lima beans, at least on this trellis here, because I can see through them to see the size of the beans inside those pods, which makes it a lot easier. To harvest the right ones see for example there you can see the beans in it they're ready to go so i think we should grab some of these off of here before i lose my son apparently my cat needs my attention more than the lima beans don't fall off there any little licorice She's a cutie. Excellent garden helper. One thing I will say is I should have brought out a bucket for these lima beans. They're loaded. I've already filled my pockets. I can't exactly show you right now, but when I get inside and I get a bowl, I'll put them in and I'll show you just how many we got. It's, it doesn't look like a lot on the trellis because the vegetation's really sparse, 
but they're really loaded and this year I'm on the ball and getting them at the right time. Are you stuck? Hmm? Where are you? Licorice. What are you doing? I have a feeling she got herself up there and she can't figure out how to get down. Are you stuck? Do you need help? Oh, is she gonna? No, no. Hey, Krish. I'll put the camera down and I'll get you down. Oh, she's gonna do it. Ooh. Right into a garden bed, safe landing. All right, guys, so we are the next day. It is a dreary, rainy morning out and we're going to tackle these tomatoes. Now, the one thing I will say, these Palestine ones, you pick them, you gotta use them quick because you can see here, they're already starting to kind of turn. It's warm out, it's been warm for the last few days, so definitely need to get these juiced and ready to go. And that's kind of giving away what we're going to do first, and that is make some tomato juice. We're going to see how many are left after that, and maybe we'll make some salsa, I don't know. I've got a lot of these San Marzanos, but I also like to freeze them to then make uh, more pasty type stuff or sauces. So. There's a lot more tomatoes out in the garden, so I think we're going to go with whatever's easiest for today. We definitely managed to get a lot of peppers, and you can see over there on the table, we still have some from harvesting the day before that. But the real winner here is those lima beans. I don't know if you can tell how big that bowl is, but it's quite a bit. We're going to get these shelled and into bags, and I'll come back and tell you just how many little one-cupper bags we got. But super pleased for a first harvest on those. All right. Well, as we're sitting here kind of having our lunch, we are shelling our lima beans. Well, I'm almost done. This is all I've got left of that uh, first harvest. And it's actually amounted to quite a bit. And not everybody grows lima beans. They're not a super popular thing. But I'll show you here. They're quite easy to shell if they're at sort of the right age. You just sort of it's like peas you're just splitting the splitting the shell open and these guys are a little younger but one thing that was kind of cool this year because they were up high these pods that you can't see through right now when they're lit just right you can actually see how big those beans are inside which means you're harvesting them at the perfect time exactly which makes it super easy and this is going to uh add up all right so i've measured out or weighed out 20 pounds of tomatoes we've got them in the sink we're going to clean them up and quarter them and get out those cores and then we're going to see how much juice this makes well now it is time to get the juice out of these and this uh, victoria food mill is definitely gets a lot of use every year and i think this is the second time so far this year we're using it and it won't be the last time to get going so chris has got these quartered uh Tomatoes, basically, just put them in, turn the crank, and eventually juice comes out. Our table is so wobbly, we need a new table badly. But there, look at that, it's already coming out. So hopefully these 20 pounds will deliver us at least the 7 liters of juice. I think I tend to do 24 pounds usually, so we'll see if I have to raid the San Marzanos to get enough. That's what we'll do. But that's why the juice is first on the agenda today. So one thing I will add here too is this is our first pass through the food mill and you can see there's quite a bit of liquid still in that pulp. So we're definitely going to be running this through twice in order to make sure we get everything we can out of it. Such a wonderful tool. So one thing I am going to mention is this is the perfect opportunity for us to save seeds from these Palestine tomatoes. I've selected out four absolutely gorgeous versions, I guess you could say, or specimens, that's the better word, of these. And we're just going to take a few seeds out of each one because I don't really want to do them all from the same tomato. I like to have a little bit of a mixture. I just think that gives me a better chance at getting good ones next year. Whether that's the truth of the matter or not, I have no idea, but that's the way I roll. So we're just going to kind of slice them up, squish out a few into the sour cream container because they need to ferment for a few days. And then we just rinse them off and put them in a paper towel and let them dry 
and boom, ready for next year. And here we are running that through for a second time. And look at all the juice that is coming out of that, which is perfect because one second, this recipe calls for basically eight liters of juice. And what we have in here so far is probably seven and a little bit because this is an eight liter pot. So that's gonna top it up super nicely. So here's the ultimate test. Will it all fit? So this was once again, 20 pounds of tomatoes. Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect because we still have a few ingredients to add to this. Why are we making tomato juice? As many of you know, we don't drink it. <laughs> but this is a wonderful recipe for making into soups or stews later on. And I will admit, it is a fantastic tomato juice as well. It's just we don't all like tomato juice. I love tomato juice. I do occasionally open a jar for myself, but it tends to most often be used in soups and stews. So this is a water bath canning recipe. We're going to go through the ingredients now. It's called Spunky Tomato Juice, and I will link the recipe below. It's one that I've been making probably for 10 years now, and I absolutely love it. Two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of celery seed, one teaspoon of celery salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and I will admit I do a heaping teaspoon, two teaspoons of onion powder, now the next ingredient is something that I'm kind of gonna change up a bit, but usually it would be one cup of sugar. Now, my plan is, since we're trying to reduce sugar in our diet, I'm going to go with a half a cup of sugar. And you have to remember, this is dispersed over eight jars of juice. So really, what is that? That's like a 16th, right, per jar? <laughs> I don't know, testing my math abilities. <laughs> I think it's a 16th of sugar, which is, I don't know how many tablespoons. <laughs> Anyways, we're not going to worry about math on this show. <laughs> so I'm going to put a half cup of arcane sugar. And then just to sweeten the pot a little bit, I'm going to put a half teaspoon of our stevia powder. This is our homegrown green stevia powder. We have been kind of experimenting over the last little bit with how much we need for sweeteners and things. So far we found that basically a cup of sugar can be replaced by a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a quarter of this uh, green powder. So that's kind of what we're operating with. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm sure it's gonna taste amazing, especially for soups and stews, right? But uh, it's certainly been fun trying to experiment with this in cookies and things like that. Replacing sugar is far more difficult than I ever realized it was going to be. So that's everything in there for the moment. The only remaining ingredient is one cup of lemon juice, which we're going to add that basically at the end of our 20 minute boil. And it's something that for the first many times that I made it, I had to do a mental reminder to put in that lemon juice. But we're gonna get this to a boil. 20 minutes later, we'll bring it back. So while this is getting ready to boil, I'm already planning ahead to my next thing, and we have some chicken broth brewing. I don't know if you call it brewing, <laughs> steeping, steaming, cooking, I don't know. Anyways, we've got chicken broth on, the bones are in there, so we're going to let that simmer for the rest of the day. Simmering, there we go. I'm um, going to let that simmer for the rest of the day, and then we'll strain that and overnight tonight it's going to kind of solidify and we can take off any of the excess grease and then we're going to can that up tomorrow for a pressure canning. But in the meantime, going back to the harvest that we brought in, we have all those peppers. So I'm going to try making these pickled jalapeno peppers, except I'm going to be making them with regular peppers and I'm just going to put some of our Aurora hot peppers in the brine. We'll see what happens. It might be a total fail, but we have a lot of peppers this year. So it's the perfect time to experiment. So basically what we're going to do now is we're gonna get the peppers all washed, then we're gonna cut them into the rings, same as you would. You know those little hot peppers that you put on sandwiches or pizza? That's what we're going for here. But because we only grow one kind of pepper for the most part, and there's a whole lot of stuff on that, which you can go to Hickory Croft Farm to discover why we only grew one pepper this year. But I'm hoping I can still somewhat achieve a spicy pepper for sandwiches. So we'll see. We don't even need a lot of sandwiches, I know, but it's just something in my mind I think we need. We're going to get onto that brine now. Now, one thing you know about me, I don't mess around with a little batch. So what was in the book would have made me two 
250 ml jars. And in my opinion, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it big. So we're going for five times the recipe. So we separated out two and a half pounds of peppers. Chris is working hard at slicing those all up and I'm gonna get the brine going. So I'm gonna be putting in what is required for a five times batch, which would basically be five cups of apple cider vinegar, one and a quarter cups of water, and six tablespoons of honey. Basically the recipe calls for four teaspoons per batch of honey in that brine. So we're going with six and a half tablespoons in our big batch. Now there's also pickling spice and pickling salt that are gonna be in this and our Aurora hot peppers, but I'm gonna put each of them into the jar. So in each jar, I'm going to put one teaspoon of pickling spice, a quarter teaspoon of pickling salt, one clove of garlic and one of our little Aurora hot peppers. I'm going to just leave them whole. The seeds are in there and as this ages, hopefully that heat from those peppers will seep into the other peppers. Like I say, this is an experiment. I'll be sure to report and obviously if it works, we're going to keep going with this in future years. So let's get busy making this brine. So as with all my over adventurous uh, canning plans, Everything's coming to be ready all at once. Our, our tomato juice is now boiled for the time it needs and we're ready to add our lemon juice and jar that up. One cup of lemon juice, make sure you're using bottled lemon juice, not fresh squeezed. It just guarantees acidity. As much as I would love to have a bunch of lemon trees and be able to do it, it's not possible for canning in some ways. Ooh, as I lose my spoon in there. That's my ladle for scooping. My jars are all done, including the ones for packing those peppers. So we're gonna get everything out. I'm gonna jar up this tomato juice and then I'm gonna jar up the peppers. All right, so we have everything ready here for filling our jars. I'm actually really excited to try this recipe. So I probably have way more jars than I need, but we'll just see how it goes. We're gonna start with garlic. We're gonna put one in each of these jars. I'm not gonna fill them all and bore you with the details. I'll come back. One quarter teaspoon of pickling salt. So with our pickling spice, I'm going to do a half teaspoon on the bottom. And then after I've filled it all the way up with all the peppers, I'm going to do a half teaspoon on top. So full teaspoon in total, just kind of divided between the top and bottom of the jar. All right, next comes those hot Aurora peppers. We've got them ready to go. I made the executive decision. I was gonna put two in a jar. Hopefully I don't regret that later. And then basically we're just going to stuff with these peppers. And then we're just going to put that last half teaspoon on top. And basically that's everything in the jars except for the brine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get all these jars filled. Then I'm going to get my brine back to a real hard boil. And then we will fill them with that liquid and get them into the water bath canner for their 10 minutes. All right, so our brine is back up to a real rolling boil. We've put that uh, pickling spice on the top of them all. One thing I notice is I've pushed them down, but they've kind of come back up. So hopefully when I pour the hot liquid on, they'll kind of settle a little bit more into the jars because they've, uh, they've definitely crept up past that half inch of head space. So we'll see how that goes. This is the part I was concerned about. They didn't push back down, so I'm not exactly sure. All right, so I press them down once again. I did take a few out, maybe I overfilled a little bit, but they kind of come back up out of the water, so I don't know. So at this point I'm kind of just taking anything out that seems excessive. We'll use them for something else, but they still want to stick up out of the water. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there to get us to the half inch, and I'm going to roll with it because I think it'll be just fine and I'm over worrying. Alright, so we got our nine 250 mil jars, and I got a one partial jar here I had to use my fermenting weight to keep that keep the peppers under the brine but I ran short on brine now saying that if I had been doing the regular size jars and following the recipe I would have got 10 250 mil jars and the brine would have worked out perfect and I would have just had peppers left over so this one's going in the fridge so that in let's say two weeks we can try it and see if we like it well guys look at that our peppers are out. I'm pleased with them. And we have our seven jars of tomato juice. But unfortunately, we still have this huge bucket of tomatoes. I shouldn't say unfortunate because there's nothing unfortunate about having food. 
but we're approaching the end of the day. We've done some canning and I'll be honest, I'm running out of motivation. So I'm going to get these into the sink. We're going to clean them and I'm going to take the ones that are super ripe and we're going to bag them up to go in the freezer. I'm hoping to get a six pound bag. That's how I usually bag them because most of my recipes call for 12 or 24 pounds. So hopefully we can do that. And then the ones like you can see this guy here, he's not that ripe. He'll be, he'll be fine for another day or two. So I have a plan for these and you'll just have to stay tuned on another video to find out what we do with the rest of them. But let's see what we can get cleaned up and in the freezer for now, because those are always handy for sauces and things like that, which we have a lot more of that to come. Well, guys, there you have it. Harvest to pantry almost in all its glory. Uh, no, it wasn't actually that glorious, but we did get a lot achieved today. We got a lot from the garden put into jars, which is great. We still have this huge pile of tomatoes here that we need to deal with. So stay tuned for how we're going to manage that. And tomatoes going into the freezer for a future project. And I also said I was going to show you those lima beans. So we ended up with two bags. Each one is one and a quarter cups. I usually do them one cup in each bag, but because I only had a half cup left over, it just didn't make sense to hang on to those. So one and a quarter it is. These are great for going into like my August stew recipes or chilies or anything like that. Uh, stir fries. There's so many ways to use these and it's great to just be able to pull a bag out and go for it. So that is our preserving for the day. And believe me, tomorrow's looking like it'll probably consist of about the same stuff. So hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day and we shall talk to you next time. Okay, wait, I'm back. I know, I said it was going, but I'm back because I forgot about all of these. <laughs> yes, we did make those uh, pickled fake jalapeno peppers or whatever you want to call them, but we still have all of these to cut up and get into the freezer too. We weren't going to bore you with the details because you've seen it before and my every bit counts, but these are going in the freezer because there's another round that's out there ready to pick tomorrow.